Welcome to my, to, to my talk again. Uh, it is my pleasure to make a presentation on, on such great con conference. And my talk uh, is about microservice security. <clears throat> in my talk, I will present some real cases of vulnerabilities in microservice application, mostly caused by some architecture or design flaws. And <clears throat> I will also try to give some practical e examples, in, 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 including some open source checklist on how to provide basic uh, architecture security assessment of such applications. Uh, so my name is Alexander. Car currently, I'm working on uh, Huawei r and and make research in some security de uh, design research uh, direction. I also teach uh, application security courses in uh, Bauman Moscow State Technical U uh, University. And <clears throat> I also try to make some little contribution to AppSec community. Um, I have several pull requests on OWASP cheat sheet project about microservice security. So the motivation of the talk and research itself uh, is the following. Uh, imagine that there, there, there is an application security guy or application security engineer who per periodically provides an assessment for some microservice system developed by some young small firms without any matured uh, secure software development processes based, for example, on OWASP SAM or some other uh, AppSec uh, process standard. And that engineer has an access to source code, has an access to testing environment, can ask developers. And the main question for that engineer from stakeholders, is my application secure or not? Maybe they are going to pro production env environment, maybe they are going to ship their application to their first customer. But anyway, the question is very general. Is my application secure or not? And because the task is very general, our application security engineer can just start his OWASPs up and start to find some SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and other uh, beautiful vulnerabilities. But it seems that that is not what our customer or what our stakeholders need because uh, it seems that our customer really wants to find some critical issues that may in, in the future greatly affect his application. So the customer or our stakeholders really need some security architecture as, as assessment. And in that uh, scenario, our AppSec engineer needs to the first un understand what core security feature review in the first place, and the second, how to provide such architecture assessment. And in order to do that, he or she can use some kind of checklist from AppSec com community, but at the beginning of my research, uh, I tried to find some, some checklist dedicated especially for microservice uh, system. There is a great checklist from OWASP, like OWASP SOS standard. The, there are some beautiful uh, publications from NIST dedicated for microservice security, but you, can, you, you cannot just take that checklist and start to apply it because there is some gaps from, for example, from OWASP SOS standard and uh, microservice architecture. And so during my research, so during my personal research, and I, I should say that the, 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 uh, the, uh, this is my personal research that do not, do not have any connection with my current employee. So after several assessments, after several fails, I finally created some very first version of my personal checklist uh, dedicated to microservice architecture. And in, in my presentation, I will share some core ideas of uh, how to provide the basic microservice security architecture assessment, and also will give some practical ex examples and show my, 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 my checklist. So before di 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 diving into architecture assessment, just a few words, not exhaustive about microservice applications it's itself from security points of view. Uh, the first point we should understand is a polyglot architecture that is usually AppSec engineer, AppSec guy who provides some assessment, 
uh, faces with multiple languages, multiple frameworks in one system. Plus, the, there are some additional infrastructure components like uh, service registry or API gateway that uh, that that dedicated and that is special components for microservice ar ar architecture, but on the other hand, they in increase uh, attack surface. The next point is that instead instead of monolithic ap applications, there are multiple ent 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 entities called uh, <laughs> microservices, and each entity has their own APIs and expose their own APIs, and that also therefore at attack surface is made broader. Uh, also, number of protected assets like dead bases or topics in message, uh, messages queues in, in, increase. So in, instead of one dead base in monolith application, you will have dead base per microservices. And this is also we should take into account during um, our ass ass assessment. And the last point here from, from, from my point of view that uh, in microservice system there is a distributed nature of microservice and therefore sharing user context is a harder that is harder because you because every click on user site on the browser uh, every every click is a uh, stay with uh, some cold chain between microservices. That is, there, there, there is a br br browser send their request to the API gateway, API gateway send request to microservice number one, microservice num number one can send request to microservice number three, and therefore to enforce authorization or authentication, every microservice in the chain should understand the user context, for example, in order to pro pro provide access control based uh, technique or our bug. So because microservice system itself is a distrib distributed system, uh, it is more harder to, to propagate user context and that may lead to some uh, access control vulnerabilities like IDOR or BOLA. So the step number zero uh, during architecture assessment is to briefly understand the whole architecture and its, its main components and connection between components. So it is great if, 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 if you work with a development team that use some kind of infrastructure as a code approach or everything as a code approach and, and has some up-to-date documentation that describe every microservice in, in their system. But in, 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 in most cases, when we're talking about some young firm startups, you have just an access to source code rep repository and maybe some slides that has some high, high low description of application. Um, so to, cr to create such simple architecture description, you as an application security guy has have has to dig into source code, uh, configuration file, check testing environment, and, may, and even you may ask uh, developers. And actually, some of them don't like that. Uh, and your main point here is that you want to clar clar clarify, you want to understand the whole architecture. And uh, I have created some simple simple checklist with a step that can help you to capture minimum information about application architecture and use that info information in future steps during uh, architecture assessment. Uh, so these steps are very simple. You should identify the first of all uh, application functionality services that is services with some business logic like MS number one or MS microservice number three. Then you have to identify and understand infrastructure services like API gateway or service registry or authentication ser service. And in, in most cases that is not in-house developed, but some third party services that um, allow, allow, to you, allow development team to implement microservice infra infra infrastructure. Then you should uh, identify different data storages, not just like dead bases, but also uh, cache, also messaging system that used to to uh, to share some information am among um, microservice app app application. Then you should understand data assets. That is 
any inform, 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 information that is critical for that system, like uh, personal data or something like that. And the last step, you should identify the relationships between those components. So you, 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 you should understand what is connection be between microservices, between microservices and some infrastructure ser services, which services has an access to message queue system or something like that that and in order to make some graphical representation it is better to use some notation like dot language uh, or tool like graph with that allows you to simply modify the pictures if any changes occur for example if development team decided to add some new connection between microservices uh, so i i put this advices into a was cheat sheet and here is a link on the slides Feel free to use that approach or contribute that to, to, to that cheat sheet to make it more better. So that was the step number zero uh, about the first step is you should understand the whole architecture of all components, uh, microservice components, infrastructure component, databases and other stuff. Uh, then the next step, we, ha we have to decide uh, uh, what features we have to analyze first, because as you know, we have some strict amount of time to provide our assessment and we should concentrate on some, some core, core uh, security feature uh, in order to find some, some high critical um, architecture vulnerabilities. And my suggestion is to focus on some on, on good old function authentication, authorization and logging. Dealing with microservice architecture, we may divide that uh, functions into subclasses like uh, age level authentication or service to service authentication. But at the end of the day, this is just authentication, authorization and logging. And so let's move some on practical example and start with a what you, you you should check uh, when 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 you when you review an authentication feature so firstly you have to check what type of authentication service custom or third party is used in application and despite that using third party services like a key clock or cloud foundry ua is an obvious choice for microservice system i personally faced with a situation when development team prefers not to spend their time on integration of some big third party authentication service in their application, but just develop their own simple service that generate JSON web token and provide it to the user. Um, and at first sign it is okay, because it's simple developers focus on some more focus on some business functionality and not, and not spend their time trying to understand how to integrate some big third party authentication service with uh, their small microservice startup application um, but but in future it, it it will be an issue when uh, application will be more more big and their customers suddenly ask please could you please integrate your application with uh, our world up service or uh, could you please uh, uh, implement multi-factor auth auth authentication and of course you should not uh, uh, development teams sh should 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 use some third party proven third, third party uh, services instead of implemented authentication from scratch uh, so if you see that there is a custom authentication services this is a red flag for you as application security engineer try to explain development team that they need to take some third party services invest their time to understand how it works it it will save amount on, on effort in the future the next point is check third party libraries that implement authentication at the microservice la layer and verify that development team use the good one li library that has a support that that don't have any open cri critical open issue on github or something like that uh, the other point here is do not to forget about other types of ex external interfaces because as i told before microservice system don't have just http interface they have uh, in the interface implemented in message queue like uh, kafka or nuts they they will have they have uh, websocket in the interface so do not forget about uh, other type of external interfaces check that there is an authentication in place uh, 
from architectural point of view, not only for HTTP itself, but for message messaging queue and web sockets. Uh, the next point is that there can be an API with authentication by design, and you should you you should identify it. For example, there is a PGSQL HTTP module that allows Postgres Post, Postgres the base management system itself to make HTTP request. Uh, and it is quite difficult uh, di difficult to implement authentication for that uh, for, for, for that in, in invocation. So such API may be unprotected, but you have to identify it and mitigate the risk that someone from external network can touch that interface. So in order to make those steps, you may check source code, configuration file, even ask development team. Uh, and also you can automate your, your work by using some where some simple script or you using tool like sim semgrep that for example allows you to to uh, extract endpoint from source code in order to understand which microservice expose what endpoints uh, you can discover unprotected api like uh, spring boot api act actuator or monitoring system api using uh, asset node database as, as asset node api database that were interesting project that capture uh, the, the big is a huge list of uh, some api that can be exposed from your microservice system so you can uh, add, add, automate automate the step and the first very simple ex example that i found during some assessment is a third party uh, third party json web token library issue so there was a microservice application uh, written in java uh, there were several microservices written in java using spring uh, spring security framework and development team also has had high level requirement that uh, you should implement authentic when you when you implement microservice you should implement authentication and you should uh, rely on spring security uh, spring security framework in order to implement authentication and in one day development team decided to add the set of microservices written in other languages in not gs because uh, because they know that they have to protect external interfaces they went to the npm re repository used some keywords found some libraries and used that libraries in order to protect uh, endpoints of a new not a gs microservices when I made the assessment, the first change was that the version of that library was 0.1.1, and the last update was just two years ago. Then we, I, and development team briefly, briefly re re review the implementation, re review the source code of that library, and we found that almost all JSON Web Token typical issue like uh, uh, using JSON Web Token without signature ver verification. Uh, non-algorithm attack was was in that li uh, library, and the bad bad news was that development team used that library not for one microservices but for seven microservices, and we had to fix fix it in in all microservices. So uh, takeaway here is that you should because authentication is very one of the core feature, one of the core, uh, one one of the core uh, security mitigation technique. You should understand what portion of the code implement. Uh, the next the next example is uh, also about authentication. So uh, is 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 about GitHub access token leakage. Uh, so there was an application that was developed using JHipster uh, framework, and JHipster is a framework to uh, to 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 develop some microservice application and jhipster registry itself in is a basic block that implements service registry and discovery feature for your application and that components has unprotected endpoint that's called management info that that, that can provide some general non-critical information about uh, about version or something like that and that endpoints is open unprotected by design because uh, it is 
it, it should not expose any critical information. But in my particular case, this endpoint was published outside and more interesting, uh, sends back the private GitHub access token. So, and when I and, and investigated that issue with the development team and with their de deployment team, uh, we, f uh, we figure out that it, it, it was their intentional solution related with the deployment process itself. Uh, and in order to mitigate it, because we have a short amount of time, strict, strict, uh, strict time, we were forced to make a private fork of JHipster registry, protect that endpoint, and implement authentication. Because development the deployment team uh, can cannot simply uh, 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 simply disable disable that feature. So we we have to create our private fork. It is better idea, but anyway, it is more secure than expose your token outside. Uh, the next portion of tips is about a auth authorization feature. So the firstly check uh, te tenant isolation de de design for all entities because uh, the most application nowadays and micro microservice application is multi-tenant application that, uh, that is not an application for one customer. Uh, it, it, it for sure will be an, an application that will be deployed some, somewhere in the cloud and provide uh, software as a service or something like that for, for multi tenants, for uh, multiple tenancies. So, the first check you should understand the tenant as the isolation strategy and not all, not, not for just HTTP request, but from every, 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 uh, uh, design block portion of portion, for example, how does tenant isolation implemented for message queue system, for database system, for web socket, and something like that. Uh, so there must be a tenant isolation st strategy uh, designed as early as possible because cr cross tenant val violation is more se ser serious auth authorization issue than uh, intra tenant access control viol violation. The next tip is to do not forget to check external messages queue and web sockets authorization policy. Try to understand how does authorization rules works not only for HTTP from HTTP point of view, but also for messages queue and for web sockets. And is it okay or not? Um, and again, to help yourself, you can use tool like SEMgrep, for example, to extract unprotected API or, for example, API with some weak access control policy from source code. Or you can use very new and interesting stateful API fuzzing technique to find to find some uh, access control issue like IDOR and BOLA. So just a few words about stateful API fuzzing technique is a modern technique for testing API. Uh, and microservice applications that was originally proposed by uh, Microsoft Research. And the core idea that uh, you have a system under the test that expose some API. Um, and you also have a uh, specification in open API format that describe all exposed interfaces. And the tool that they implement stateful API fuzzing technique on the first step, parse specification and understand dependencies between requests. For example, the tool can understand that uh, the post request pr 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 produce the data with name ID, and that ID consu is consumed by other requests like a get request and delete request or put request. So to get good coverage during dynamic testing, dynamic security testing, you should make the post, post request first get an ID and then use that ID for the second request and third request uh, to, to and it allow, allows you to cover more function in your uh, testing application. And so then having the dependencies information, the tool can generate testing HTTP request sequence in more intelligent way to, uh, to propagate data through cold chain and therefore get more good coverage. Now there are two tools that, as, as, I, as I know, there are two tools that implement that new modern, modern stateful API fuzzing te technique. One tool from Microsoft Research itself and other tool from Yelp. You can try it. And I should also say that th that tool implements some additional security checks uh, based based on uh, stateful API fuzzing technique, for example, Restler, Restler from Microsoft has um, 
uh, checker that implement uh, IDOR checks. And Fuzz Lightyear also has a checker that allows you to uh, check your application against some typical against some IDOR. So if you have an application, if you have an open eye specification, you can uh, make that uh, fast, fast check in order to understand whether or not that implement correctly. And example in that, in, in that portion is uh, authorization uh, is a cross-tenant resource access. Now, in that case, the system was multi-tenant system and tenant isolation was implemented based on domain name. Uh, load balancer at the edge extract host header, um, process it and propagates tenant name using some uh, dedicated header, for example, called tenant. Uh, microservice provided JSON web token verification to force authentication and authorization, but use untrusted data in the tenant header to choose in which database microservice needs to read or write da data. So because microservice use untrusted data, an attacker can, uh, for one tenant, can touch resources from other tenant. And the fix here was to add some tenant ID information in uh, sign at JSON web token and use it and use that tenant ID information only after uh, JSON Web Token Signature Verification. So development team had to update all microservices to fix that issue. So uh, again, when we're talking about authorization feature, uh, answer the question, is that application will, uh, will, will deploy it under multi-tenancy infrastructure? And if yes, try to understand what multi-tenancy isolation strategy implemented in that application. Is there any flaws from design point of view uh, in that strategy? And only that move to their auth authorization itself uh, in, in, inside tenant. And other, Again, simple, simple, simple example dealing with the microservice system is example of IDOR vulnerability related with the web socket. And, uh, and in that case, there was a strong authentication during handshake step, but an application used some guessable ID parameters in API messages and did not implement any authorization check that, uh, that leads to a tenant escape. And again, the main takeaways here is just not to forget about all other interfaces of your microservice system because microservice is not, uh, it, in most cases, is not only HTTP, but also WebSocket, uh, Messages Queue, and other. And talking about WebSocket API security, I highly recommend a talk by uh, Mikhail Yegorov from uh, Hacti uh, at Hacktivity Conference. There is a great example of some uh, vulnerabilities related to WebSockets API. Uh, so I took all my findings and ideas and summarized it in microservice application security design assessment checklist. It ba and basically I just take some requirements from architecture block of OWASP SOS and create some re refinement and detailed requirements dedicated for microservice specific dom domain. So there was a few cases that did not trace to OWASP ISOs like tenant isolation requirements, but uh, most of my uh, checks are traced to to OWASP ISOs. And if you're interested in, in that checklist, here is here is a link. And so to finalize my talk, here are some take takeaways. So before diving into security assessment and looking for injections, cross-site scripting, you should try to identify microservice application core security feature and re review them from architectural point of view. And in most cases, that features that you should review firstly is tenant isolation, authentication, authorization, and logging. Uh, there are several basic architectural checks that have to be taken into account during nearly all architecture assessment. And in order to, to do that in, at, at, at scale, you should create a checklist that cover typical vulnerabilities, typical architecture vulnerabilities in microservice system and use it and update it during an assessment. And to create such checklist, you may, you may start with uh, my own checklist and update it. And the last point here is, is and the microservice application itself is uh, arch architecture is rapidly changes. And typically ne nearly every week during every sprint, uh, 
there are some changes in microservice, the, so, so, some dedicated microservice system. And to find architecture related vulnerabilities in full, you should use up to date uh, architecture description. And it is advisable to use our, our, our architecture as a code approach. And you may start with a very simple, uh, simple approach uh, presented in WASP cheat sheet related with them. Um, uh, doc document and microservice application. Uh, so that's it from my side. If you have any question, we can discuss it. Thank you.